Unintentionally, these modern Norsemen have retraced one of the earliest voyages of their forefathers. At the turn of the 8th century, Vikings from the coast of Norway first sailed into the Faroe Islands. Here some settled and founded the civilization which thrives today. Beyond the throbbing seaport, there is a culture and a way of life which retains much of the spirit and the violence of the Vikings. Isolated on a group of islands in the North Atlantic, live nearly 40,000 people, descendants of the Vikings who landed here a thousand years ago. There is a time in the Pharaohs when a cry re-echoes, Grindabot, the whale alarm. The migrating pilot whales have returned. Small craft of every kind join in the chase to the harbor and the kill. by an armada of small boats, the whales are driven to shallow water where escape is difficult. is crucial. If the wounded animal veers sideways in a frantic, unnatural motion, it may stampede the herd through the ring of boats and out to sea. Now even the whales that could escape are drawn back by an overpowering herd instinct. Back, as the natives say, to the blood. The Faroese themselves have speculated that the killing of the whales may be an outlet for a certain native savagery when the Viking blood boils. In these wild harbor roundups are many of the crude, cold-blooded methods that the Vikings practiced in their day. In an hour and a half, perhaps 150 of these great animals will be taken. Most of their lives, they are a gentle, peaceful people. But when the whales come, they revert to another age. Once the harsh reality of their existence drove them to hunt the whale for food, now, though whale meat is still a favored part of the diet, Grindabot has become a national sport. miles from Scandinavian shores, these rugged islands were settled by Vikings from the coast of Norway. Now nominally a part of Denmark, the men of the Faroes have their own language, flag, and currency, and their own traditions, culture, and individual lifestyle. In the ninth century, when Vikings first landed on these Atlantic islands, they found Irish hermits tending sheep. They drove out the hermits, but kept the sheep. Today, the islands are called the Faroes, the Sheep Islands. 
and there are more than 70,000 of these animals, almost twice the human population. These animals are vital to the islanders. Their wool clothes them. Their meat, fresh, salted or dried, feeds them. In the summer, sheep are rounded up to be wormed, treated for sickness, and sheared. For the young, it has always been a special time. Now, after a thousand years, some of the young are no longer content to be sheep herders. Many are leaving the herds, the land, and the past to the old. In a strange way, tradition remains a part of the pharaoh's economy. In the mid-19th century, these looms provided yarn for nearly 100,000 hand-knit sweaters treasured in the fashionable shops of Europe. Now, these people whom time has forgotten are masters of a vanishing craft. Responding to challenges centuries old, young Faroese still thrilled to ancient Viking sports. As they skim across Torshavn Harbor, their traditional high proud racing boats are symbols of how little life has changed here. But in the days ahead, some will make one final trip across Torshavn Harbor and leave the Faroe Islands forever. To other generations, the sea is not a means of escape, but a source of life. With a decoy, they hunt the guillemots, the diving waterfowl which flourishes in the northern seas. When the birds try to land on the pitching, well-trapped board, their feet are caught in wire snares. To these older islanders, it has never occurred that there is anywhere else to live. Here, you can always live off the sea and the land off the fish and the birds. The puffin, the island's unwitting clown, is easily deceived by man and by a few pretty decoys set up on sticks. The puffin's oldest natural enemies are predatory birds. For protection, it has learned to nest beneath the ground. But against man, the puffin has no natural defense. The Faroese, since the time they first came to these islands, have hunted the puffin for food. Still, the birds thrive. For among the hunters, there is a code. Those that are nesting or feeding their young are allowed to live. The island's endless volcanic cliffs, pockmarked with crevices and lined with ledges, form a monumental nesting ground. A breeding place for species from north and south these islands comprise one of the greatest bird concentrations in the world. Over 200 species, millions of wild birds. Each year, a unique variety of hunter invades the cliffs. The vertical cliffs rise up nearly 2,000 feet from the pounding surf. In their traditional mountaineering apparel, the egg snatchers clamber over these treacherous cliffs for nine days, a time limit set to allow the birds to lay other eggs and survive. 
In June, the ledges are filled with millions of freshly laid eggs from the guillemots and razorbills, gannets, shearwaters, stormy petrels, and countless others. Each group of birds finds its own niche in the cliff walls. Men still lose their lives pursuing this age-old tradition and sport. The eggs they hunt are a delicacy, a food supplement for winter when the diet is meager and unvarying. Isolated for centuries, the rugged men of the pharaohs are the direct descendants of history's legendary seafarers. Through their veins still courses the blood of the Vikings. They are a dramatic reminder that these towering isles of rock have created a uniquely independent breed of men. Untouched by the outside world, a way of life has survived beyond its time. These rugged northern islands are a last remaining outpost of the Viking spirit.